Hey, hello everyone, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Continuing some StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. I'm gonna play the third Zero Tool mission, Echoes of the Future. I've been spreading these crystal missions out just because Jim can't do them all in a row. It tires him out. He needs to take a break in between. I return to our ruined homeworld of Iron. The Zerg infestation still covered much of our beloved world. The desiccated remains of the Overmind were still there. A grim reminder of battles lost, and battles won. I remember the fall of Ire. Don't much like the idea of having to see it all again. Guess there's nothing for it. At the very apex of its victory against us, the Zerg Overmind grew overconfident. Now, all that was left of the mighty Overmind was a twisted, withered husk. I needed to understand whatever memories lingered within the creature's rotting mass. Only by making contact with the gargantuan tendrils connected directly to its cortex could I learn its secrets. Yet its countless minions, which seemed to be feeding from its dead husk, would prove somewhat problematic. All right, Zeratul, we got to get you 50 kills this map, but there are plenty of Zerg that will oblige us. That won't be too challenging. And then completing it in under 20 minutes, that's not a lot of time, but it makes sense. Iyer's heavily infested. We're getting in, we're getting what we need, and we're getting the heck out. I must find a way to establish a foothold and summon reinforcements to keep the Zerg at bay. What's up, Observer? This faithful observer has kept watch since the evacuation. Its abilities will certainly prove useful now. Bunch of free so zero tool kills here right at the beginning. It's fantastic. 15 free. Some of these abandoned structures remain functional. We shall make use of them. This ancient beacon still thrums with power. I wonder... Ah, oh, I've heard tales of the mighty Colossi sealed away beneath ire. The beacon must have awoken these fearsome guardians. The Zerg perceive a threat to their dead master. All right, there are a ton of resource pickups. And any mission that has a bunch of free resource pickups, you should try to go and get right away. It makes a huge difference. So let's go ahead and set up our base. The Zerg will keep coming until we are dead. I must find the Overmind's cortex and discover what I can from it. Okay, so a ton of free Zeratul kills right here. So let's just have him pick up all these resources. We're going to send our Colossi up here to do this. The sooner that we can get the obelisks, the better. Those are the bonus objectives. And also, just walking near a warp gate allows you to use warp gates. You can't until you do that, actually. See, our gateway is just a gateway right now. Okay, and just don't stop making probes. If we probes. our observers wisely, we can scout the area before putting ourselves at risk. These warp gates appear to be functional. Perhaps there's a chance... So he has 35 My kills already. And the sooner that we can grab this obelisk, the better, because we get some stalkers for free. And then we're going to spend all this money and get a bunch of gateways. It's fantastic. Okay, we can just ignore this stuff. I don't know why they're not unburrowing with the Colossi up here, but I'm absolutely fine with it. And then we'll move these Colossi back because there's a Zerg attack that comes. You can power all the neutral buildings and use them, which is actually pretty important. Okay, so now let's spend our cash that we've gotten and start getting some stalkers. And keep getting probes. We must be prepared to defend our base. The Zerg are on the move. 
Okay, and we'll grab our own robo bay, or robo facility rather. Here comes a little zergling attack though, no problem. We're gonna be able to wipe these with Colossi because Colossi are real good. And then our next step is to go and power one of these obelisks. We can get a free robo facility. And by powering that, we're gonna get some stalkers and we use the stalkers to go and wipe out the area where the robo bay is. And then we can start making Colossi. Then we go and clear the other obelisk area. All is well with the world. Okay, so now we just sit and wait, and we'll leave this probe here for now. We can start sending right. these units, the Colossi specifically, to start clearing out where the second obelisk is, as well as Zeratul, because that's also where the first beacon is. So the key here is get those neutral buildings, use them, don't stop making probes, and get all the resource pickups. It's actually a really, really big deal. We were trapped within the gate's energy matrix when it was deactivated. You have our thanks. Okay, and we need vision as much as possible. Oh, sorry, Observer. Well, I was going to say we needed vision. Colossi, just back us up. That's fine. Because we need all these Zerg to unburrow. Otherwise, when we try to take this base, it'll be bad news. Okay, so let's just hang out here. We can go ahead and grab some Immortals and more Stalkers. And just do as much of this as possible early on. See, they only unburrow when you're, like, right on top of them. The first overmine tendril. I sense... Pain. Surprise. Death. Okay, let's go and see if we can clear out the area by the Robo Bay before the first Frenzy. And with the Frenzy, it's not that bad. As long as you have Zeratul on one side to void prison, no big deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and power this. And hopefully we can get up here in time to get this all worked out. I don't think it'll be that bad. Wait for the Mutalisks to come in because we need to storm them. I'm losing my, uh, my observers because I'm a fool. Go ahead and grab this. Okay, looks good. So now Zeratul back up all the way down here. I think it's random where this stuff comes. Probe, just come and sit down here. We can... There we go, and the rest of you just hang out. The Zerg seek to overwhelm us. To arms, my brethren. Okay, and then let's take this base. So all my armies sit over here, and then Zerats will sit over here. My army will be able to wipe out the Zerg that spawn, I'm pretty certain, pretty easily. Be careful, High Templar. Okay, this one was like right on top of us. Oh, okay, and of course, it's like right on top of the building that we just, that we just got. High Templar, we're gonna need ya. Actually, no, we don't really need you. Not too bad. Let's just turn these into an Archon. We got this getting set up. And Zeratul apparently is stuck. Okay. Now we just need lots and lots of Colossi. So let's go ahead and get this set up. And I'm going to send a probe up here to just set up a couple cannons. Because as you can see, they do like to reinforce a little bit. So just a couple cannons. No big deal. Okay, and we're short on money right now. Right now, What I'd like to do is start pushing over here. And we need more Colossi. So Zeratul, well, and Stalkers lead the way. Lure them to us. And let's just keep an eye on the other. There's an Ultralisk there. So let's just Void Prison. Okay, and there's a Broodlord. Let's also back up. And keep making Colossi as we can afford them. But right now, we just need to focus on saturating our base a little bit better. And we want to get close to the first beacon before the next Frenzy. So let's blink in Zeratul and Void Prison here. And Zeratul gets his HP back every time he uses the beacons. So no problem if he, uh, if he takes health damage. No problem at all. So let's slowly wipe this. Attack over to the left. And get plus two attack, more Colossi, and we're going to need more pylons here pretty soon. Actually, not really. We're in good shape. We could take the Robo Facility down here as well, but it's so far out of the way that you probably very easily uh, have stuff rally into bad spots, is what I would expect. 
Okay, this is going pretty well. We can pick off this Overseer. Not that that would really matter that much. Okay, more Colossi, please. And then we'll get some more uh, Immortals as well. And I think we go for a Templar Archive. Because we're going to have an excess of gas, it looks like. This is done, so we just keep saturating here. Only a minute 12, so I'm actually really tempted to back up and ensure that we don't have a problem with uh, the Frenzy. Let's do... Ex well, maybe if we can kill this Broodlord, that would be nice. Okay, let's start backing up. We can kill what we can. I don't know how much the Zerg reinforce here. So we want to put our Colossi and such here, like our army here, and then Zeratul all the way down here. They should get down there in time, and with our extra money, we'll make some Stalkers. We're close to getting supply blocked as well. Okay, and we need to set up like one or two cannons just for any errant units that come over here. Even if these bases get wiped out, it doesn't matter. You still get to keep your bonus objective. Seven seconds. We're going to stay a little closer to this building now so it doesn't get wiped. It's just because it's out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, Void Stasis this. Okay, we have a lot of Colossi. Okay, Stalkers blink up here. We want them to come towards us. Okay, no problem. So now we want our army to come up here. And let's just warp in some Zealots to help here. Our cannon finished just in time. Get him, Zealots. Zeratul's almost definitely got his 50 kills. Okay, let's bring all of our stuff up here. And more Stalkers, Immortals, anything. Okay, looks good. And then let's rally any Robo units up here. So let's just take this group and start pushing into this area. Zeratul will slowly make his way up. We can hit this beacon and probably push up into the one in the back as well. And then with the Frenzy right after that... With the Frenzy right after that, we'll take the time to go up the right side and get the last uh, get the last beacon. So here comes Zeratul. Keep in mind, you just have to get him on the beacon and then he's invulnerable while he's on it. The second overmind tendril. I sense death and joy. That's two now where he's like, I, I sense death. And it's like, yes, yes, Zeratul, it's, it's dead. It's been dead for a while. We all knew this. Okay, let's just start moving up in this direction. We got a lot of Colossi. This is going pretty well. These Zealots are just cannon fodder. Just cannon fodder, unfortunately. Keeping an eye on Zeratul. He's fine. He's trapped. So let's try to get this one first. Oh, run, Zeratul. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. Let's just blink in and void stasis. Zeratul taking some heat. I would like another immortal. Oh, we actually have another immortal coming up. We don't have to kill that stuff on the outskirts. Can we kill this, please? Okay, Zeratul, let's grab this, and then we can start making our way back down. The third overmind tendril. I sense satisfaction in a plan set in motion long ago. And fear of the future. The rain I will disperse Okay, we got a minute to get back. We're going to do the same I thing. We're going to put Zeratul down here and put our army over here. Saturate this gas. I built that Templar Archive, but we can't really do anything with it. Have been kind of slacking with my upgrades as well. Oh, maybe that's why we're short on gas. We weren't fully saturated. The Zerg are coming. Okay, and then after this frenzy, we should pretty easily be able to get to the last area. I would expect. Maybe another Archon rather than getting upgrades, because they won't finish in time for the mission to end. So again, those resource pickups, I keep I keep pushing this, these resource pickups, but they are hugely helpful. Okay, well, we spawned right on top of this one, so we can start moving towards the last area. Nice. Okay, so let's head on over here. I never powered this other robo-facility, and just for fun, we can. Okay, we're going to get supply blocked. 
Zeratul taking some heat. Where is he? Oh yeah, get out of there, buddy. We don't have any other melee. We really built a lot of Colossi. Probably did not need this many, if I'm being honest. We definitely did not. So we have to push through this base and get up to the last beacon. And we have two and a half minutes, so that should be fine. Move on over here and grab these. Keeping a couple High Templar in to feed back the Overseers would be good, but again, not, not something that's 100% necessary. Having this pylon down here is pretty good. Let's grab a few Immortals. Okay, Zeratul's okay. I just keep an eye on his little icon down here to see how his shields are. Look out, Archon! Okay, but our Colossi are just absolutely wasting everything on the ground. I mean, even, I mean, Immortals are the best, I think, against uh, Ultralisks, but Colossi in large numbers like this just absolutely obliterate everything. So all we have to do is blink him on top of the thing at this point, and we're done. And we still have a minute and a half to spare, but we can clear out a lot of these Zerg as well. Okay, cool. There you go, Zeratul. The fourth over mine tendril. I sense an end. I must go to the Overmind Cortex to understand. I return to serve. Greetings, brother. I speak to you from the beyond. Tassadar. But you died slaying this cursed Overmind. I have never tasted death, Zeratul, nor shall I. But that is a tale for another time. I have come to tell you of this creature's courage. Courage? It was an abomination. Not always. The Zerg were altered. A single overriding purpose was forced upon them. The destruction of our people. The Overmind was formed with thought and reason, but not free will. It screamed and raged within the prison of its own mind. Who did this? Why? Overmind found a way to resist its all-consuming directive. It created a chance, a hope of salvation. The Queen of Blades. Madness. Only she can free the Zerg from slavery, and in so doing, Save all that is from the flame. I do not understand, brother. Forget what you know, Zeratul. The Overmind saw a vision. The end of all things. And now, you must see it too. I cannot bear it. Stop. So, Jim saw how much it freaked Zeratul out, so he's probably going to wait to look into the crystal again. Yeah, we're going to play In and Out of Darkness closer to the end of the game. Alright, cool. 1854, that's pretty good. A little over a minute to spare. Definitely 50 kills with Zeratul. We got 89 there. Both obelisks powered. Never got depowered, actually. We got to keep all the buildings. And I, I just want to stress, getting the resource pickups early, as many as you can. Use those Colossi early. They're two of the best units anti-ground. You might as well set them up to do something. And then Zeratul getting his kills and a bunch of resource pickups. And then powering those buildings. A Robo Support Bay is 200-200. That's a lot of money you can save, especially on a map where you have to save time.
Nuke noodles. Call down the flavor. <laughs> ridiculous. Just ridiculous. When I get out of this suit, first thing I'm doing is... Well, uh, <laughs> I'd hate to offend your delicate sensibilities. Yeah, we get it, Tychus. You're a brusque working man. You look haunted. You've been seen into the spirit world, and you learn something you don't like. It's Kerrigan. Seems the Overmind made Kerrigan to free the Zerg from something that put him on a collision course with the Protoss. It's all gone wrong. Everything's twisted. And there's something out there that's set to destroy us all. Zerg. Protoss. He's a strong recess. How terrible. How powerful is something that plays with their feats? Indeed. Okay, we unlock the next research tier for Protoss. So let's head to the lab and do that real quick. The obvious choice, the obvious choice is a science vessel. Just because it couples so well with the cellular reactor to keep mech alive. Irradiate, not so much. It's just the, the free repair. It's free other than the time it takes to generate energy. Ravens are decent, they're really fun to use. It's just, the, the enemy is never perfectly clumped like in this nice little cutscene right here. The turrets are okay, but again, microing these ravens versus the rest of your army, it just takes time and effort, whereas the science vessels are so much more passive and useful. So we're going science vessels. Be careful, Jim. I think you're losing yourself in that crystal. Thank you, Hanson. I appreciate your concern. The Protoss tank has leveled up. Okay, I might be exceeding the boundaries of good science, but I'm now sure the crystal has some sort of, if not sentience, at least direction. I put a broken nanofabricator in the tank last night, and today it's fixed. And it can accomplish things it shouldn't. If I can reverse engineer this fabricator, I could do amazing things with automated repair or even near instant manufacturing of advanced AI weaponry. Possibilities are limitless. That's the science vessel in Raven. On the less upbeat end of things, the level of energy stored in the crystal's matrix has not increased at all, despite the fact that the crystal continues to grow. So it must be emitting that energy somehow. Somewhere. I don't think we ever checked out the artifact after we got the third piece at the dig. So these things are still a big mystery, huh? Actually, I have found something interesting. Whenever you use that Protoss device over there, the artifacts respond by drawing together and expanding their molecular matrices. A little slower and with shorter words, please. Well, if you think of them as dry sponges, they draw ambient energy like water. These things try to absorb as much energy as they can. Are they dangerous? Not if you're human. If my theories are correct, and you are a Protoss, for instance, they could drain the life right out of you. In English, Doc. That's the second time he's done that. Actually, have we have we listened to that before? I didn't think so. Okay, let's go to the armory and spend our money. You know, I've been watching the logs. Those damn Protoss are still way ahead of us. I can't believe some of the stunts they can pull off. Tell me about it. They've learned some new tricks since the last time we fought. I mean, come on. Since when could they warp in guys just anywhere? I thought they needed some kind of gateway at least. Not just anywhere. They need a pylon or another power source close by. Still, they've been working to improve their tech, just like us. We don't need to improve our tech, we have fire bats. Speaking of fire bats, I think, why don't we just go ahead and get this juggernaut plating finally so our devil dogs might actually survive. That's exciting. Okay, and I think we also grabbed the maelstrom rounds. Plus 40 damage is insane. And it also applies to siege breakers, so they do 140 damage to their main target. And then, with our extra cash, I think we just go ahead and grab either multi-lock weapon system or maybe upgrade our turret health. Why don't we grab the multi-lock weapon system for now, because I do quite like Spartan Company, and that will apply to them. Okay, to the bridge. Damn, Matt. I don't even know what to make of this last vision from the crystal. Zeratul was looking for more clues about the end of the universe. But this time, he was on Ire. Ire. What was he looking for? He was trying to find out why the Overmind made the Queen of Blades in the first place. She's the one that's going to destroy the universe? No. That's just it. I think she's the only one that can save it. So that last one really freaked Jim out, and he saw how concerned Zeratul was, so he's just putting it in the back of his mind. 
And maybe he'll look at the crystal again, perhaps when something reminds him to. All right, this has been Jay Barino. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.